Hey guys, this is PX, Mr. Collector. Welcome to my YouTube channel, episode 20. Hey, in today's episode, this is the list. Email, news, a shout out, mail, mm, and something new I want to share with you. All right, so talk to you in a sec. <laughs> How's it going? You know, I'm I'm looking around and um, I've got stuff to share with you today. You know, I, I know I try to keep these videos on the short side, but it's just too much information, too much that I got to share with you. And um, I, I, I can't help myself, guys. So be patient with me. Hope you hang in there. And um, I hope you like what I got to say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As you know, that's my buddy. That's my buddy, Brightburn, right there. You know it. Anyway, I've got some I've got some notes for you today. Yeah, I had to write it down because there's a lot to discuss. So let's start out with um an email that I got today. You have an email. Yeah, so I got an email from Sideshow saying that heavy infantry Mandalorian should be arriving at the warehouse in the next three days or so. Finally. Yeah, because I know some people have been showing off their figure and I've been jealous and I, I'm like, you know, and I know that he's on the wait list and you can't order him anymore. So I was so glad that I had my, mine is paid off. Yeah, I think I only have like shipping and it may be like, you know, that my last, I think it's like $34 is all I owe. So... I'm ready. Where are you? <laughs> so that's good. All right. And then I got some news, news alert, you. breaking news, news alert, breaking news. Yeah. So integrity toys announced the next line, the next selection of goodies coming out. And I got to tell you that, um, it's a, you know, I, you know, if you're familiar with the, the, the what's going on with Integrity Toys, it's really not fun. It's really not fun at all because I got to tell you, right, um, I became a member because I thought I'd, at least I get the end to what's new and, you know, ahead of the rest of the public type of thing. But they make it really hard for you to get excited about things. First of all, their, their number on, on, on figures are very small. So like this new line, I believe one of them is um, only 550. They have a lot of members. They have thousands and thousands of members. And that's why these figures sell out like that. So that makes it really, really tough for you to get excited when you're like this small in the number, in the scale of people that they are, right? Um, and then the, 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 so the, that's one line that, that, that is coming out that there's only 550. And the other line, they're only 600. That's, that's nothing. So well, then they sent out this, so they sent out this email, you know, to the members asking, you know, what is their preference? Do they want to do a lottery? Do they want to do, you know, first come first serve or do they want to do 50-50? Now, as you guys know, that whenever you do first come, first serve, that's a freaking pain in the butt. It's a freaking pain in the butt because, you know, like with Sideshow, you know, they come out with these promos and you get on there and you like lock in and somebody's in the cart and you got to wait and do it again until you hopefully get in. Well, it's kind of the same thing. Well, first of all, they do it at a time when people are working, unfair. 
Then they're doing it at a time where it's like, this is the, the right, like right now. So I'm there, I'm, I'm positioned. And I'm like, okay, does this even work? Because I'm, and never, 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 never do I get anything, never. So it kind of takes the fun out of it. I prefer the lottery for two reasons. Number one, last time that I did the, a lottery, I won. That's a good reason. <laughs> But number two, it gives everybody an equal opportunity, right? Whether you're working, whether you are available, whatever it may be, it gives everybody a fair chance to throw in their numbers and pick from the lottery, right? If anything, at least 50-50. So, you know, and the other thing is they're so secretive. They're so secretive. So, you know, they send you an email saying that they're going to have the reveal, the big reveal on YouTube. So as a member, you know, you log in and sure enough, you get through and you, there's a show. And it's up normally about an hour. And that's when they reveal the, the, the new, the new um, collectibles. And at the moment, you were like extremely, really excited about it, right? Because it's like, oh, wow, check that out. Oh, look at that. Oh, right. So like, I'll, you know, as you know, I've been following Gem and the Holograms. And um, I think that they're, they're, they're really cool, cool figures and... I actually put um, the cartoon on my queue so that I could start watching and become more familiar with with what um, the figures are, what the characters are. So they reveal these these figures, and you know you you want just about every single one that they have because they're just so unique. And like I said, in the Integrity Toys world, those are like high end, very desirable figures. But then they go into this thing, uh, don't show the pictures to anybody. It was a big secret. Now, I really don't know the reason for that. Because literally, I watched the, the I think that I watched the program on Friday, yesterday. Today, they sent an email that now you can show the pictures. I'm like, what's the difference? I mean, what does it matter? So I don't get the reason for this big secret, right? Because with the following day, you can share the photos. Okay. So then on the show yesterday, um, they announced that they, you know, according to the voting, people decided that with the with this um, collection, they're going to do first come, first serve. And I was like, oh, man. So I was bummed about that. So sure enough, I think it's on Monday. I'm going to have to be there at a certain time and hopefully log in. And I'm like, okay, well, they have, I think, five new figures. I'm not exactly sure how this works. I mean, you know, do I have to, like, continuously, like, get into one and then if that doesn't work, go to the next one? I mean, I'm not exactly sure what to expect. It wasn't really well explained. So I'm not really getting my hopes high on that. Um, you know, where the last time I won the, the lottery, at least with what I wanted, and I got it, you know, I made my first payment on it, and it was easy, 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 easy. So then I decided, well, let me call one of the distributors. And the distributor was, you know, very honest with me and told me that, you know, they can't take like, pre-orders, which I understand. I just wanted to know how the system works as far as even with the distributor, how do you get in, like, how does that work? First come, first serve? Um, do you, is there like a list? I mean, I didn't understand. Anyway, it, it was no use. It, it was no help. So I, I guess that after the members already have a chance to get into first come, first serve, after that, a certain amount of numbers go into sideshow but even with that i gotta tell you i was in sideshow like right on it and by the time that i got right on it sold out i think that we're all on the same time clock so how does that work i like i'm, I'm you know if you have any ideas please let me know <laughs> because i'm like okay is it like a minute before five minutes before like how does that like i didn't understand it so i'm gonna try again try to see if i could Beat the system, right? Um, yeah, because it really is no fun. And one of the reasons why I'm a little um, perturbed by it is because, like I told you, when these figures go into the secondary market, or the 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 price point is ridiculous, ridiculous. Like I think I told you last time that with the ones that I actually won the lottery, 
Um, actually, no, I just received some in the mail that came on today. And I got them for a great, great deal. When I checked the secondary market, so I think I paid like two ninety for a set of two, which is like I tell you, really, really cheap. That same figure was five ninety five ninety five. 595 or 695, something like that in at the secondary market. I was like, oh, 625. That's what it was. That's ridiculous. I mean, that is so ridiculous. And I'm, you know, I think that people must be paying it for them to say that to think that they could could get it because I'm I I'm not gonna pay that. So that's crazy. So it kind of takes the fun out of it, as you guys know. Um, so that is my gripe about that. So they announced that they are having, um, let's see, uh, they have like, you know, they have different collections within the Integrity Toys line. So one of the co collections that they have is the 50, East 59th collection. And some of these figures, like if you're into like fashion models, um, you know, that type of thing, they're smoking because like, you know, they're doing the one that um, they look like 19, 1940s, um, um, you know, with the killer outfit, the killer hair. I mean, really beautiful figures. Um, so one of them is Lady Aurelia Gray, which is an African-American um, woman, um, beautiful. Um, another one is a redhead that kind of looks like Lucille Ball. Um, and that one is New York Bound. Victor, the Victoria um, Rue. And then the third one is like a guy from, you know, New Orleans um, or even like Savannah, Georgia, you know, um, high class, well dressed African American guy, um, Augustus Gus Blake. Really cool, all of them. Right. Um, so I know that just by the look of them, they're going to go fast. Everybody wants them. And like I said, there are only 550 of these. So that's nothing. That's nothing. Then the other ones that they announced are Gem and the Holograms, the Mis Misfits. So if you are familiar with the show, which I was, and I, I just learned this, um, I just started, I just watched a couple of episodes just to get the just of the characters and what they're about. So I guess Jess on the Holograms are the band themselves, a right? um, all women band, and they're within the '80s, so they're very Cindy Lauper, Madonna-ish kind of looking, um, you know, with colorful hair and very bright outfits. The Misfits are a band that was trying to steal the limelight from Jem and the Holograms. So it was almost like the the duplicates, right? So the um the oh my god, what is the I can't even think of the word uh, the imposters, right? Um, so it's two lines within the one collection. You got Gem and the Holograms, and then you got to have the Misfits. So these um two that are coming out this double set are the Misfits, and um it's called um I like your style. Mary Storms Phillips and Jetta Burns. Those are the two that, that are coming out. Smoking figures. Beautiful box, the, the colors, right? And the, the instruments, really well done. So we'll see what happens. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited about it, but at the same time, I'm not I'm getting my hopes high. Not getting my hopes high on that. So that's where I stand with that. So. There's something I wanted to talk to you about um, on a different different type of thing. So, so I know you guys, you know, as collectors, as a group, right? We have certain people that we follow. And when it comes to Sideshow and um, Hot Toys, there's basically the main ones that, that people follow, right? Now, I myself... Right. Um, I that's one of the reasons um, I myself try to bring something different to you. Right. Because these guys are basically following the same format and, you know, what figure is announced and they all got to so they can see who gets to it first or type of thing. And, you know, and I could name names, but you know who they are. Right. And um, I myself personally, I mean, if I'm not amused, I'm actually bored. So I try to in my in my um, episodes, 
I try to mix it up. That's why I talk about Hot Toys. I talk about Sideshow. I talk about Integrity Toys. I talk about my collections. I talk about Barbie. Just because the collecting world is for everybody. So I try to bring in something for somebody, right? Um, and if you know, you're into one collection, you might learn something different about something else, right? Or to let you understand that if you are a guy, it's okay if you have a Barbie. You know, we're in a different world right now. So, you know, people are a lot more open-minded about things like that. So I always say, collect what you really want to collect and don't worry about anybody else. If that's what you enjoy, you go ahead and do that, right? That's what I do, right? I don't care if people are like, oh, he collects dolls or, oh, you know, he's this or that. It doesn't bother me. I, I'm, I'm me. I'm as honest as I could be with you all the time. Right? And that's one thing you can count on me. I'm going to be honest about you. Whatever I like, I'm going to let you know. Right? Whether you like it or not, that's up to you. Right? So I've noticed that what happens in the, in the market is that um, with, the, with these channels, with these um, people that have the, these um, things about talking about hot toys and stuff like that, you know, they have a lot of followers. And the one thing that I wanted to say about that is that you've always got to make your own decisions, right? Because what happens is that, you know, people don't realize that their opinions sometimes are really strong. And when people start believing you, sometimes I think they miss out on things, you know? And I really believe that if you really like something, it doesn't matter what anybody says. Right? Like I even noticed it on, on, on Facebook with some of these, you know, um, pages that, that people are like, oh, you know, well, you know, should I get this or should I get that? You know what? If you really like it, that's all that matters, right? Because my figure may rub off, like the paint may rub off on here or something may like deteriorate a little bit, but it doesn't mean that your figure is going to do the same thing, right? You've got conditions that are different, whether it's environment, sun, light, how they're treated, all of these things factor in, you know? So if you take care of your figure, most likely you're gonna have a better chance of it being good than not, right? So be really, really careful with some of the things you hear. Now, there's some things that I pay attention to. For example, when the Joker, you know, um, Jerry Leto, um, the Joker with the purple coat, it says that it stains the skin. Well, that's something to, to think about. Right? Because do I want his skin to be stained? I'm not really sure. Right? But there's a way that maybe you can protect that so it doesn't happen. Um, so there's certain things that I pay attention to. But at the same time, it doesn't refrain me from getting the figure. And as a matter of fact, it's actually one of my favorite figures, actually, because I thought that, you know, he's not the most attractive guy, but the Joker's supposed to be not attractive. Right? He's not, it's not like, oh, like, oh, he's a good-looking guy. No, he's supposed to be intimidating and all that, and that character is exactly that. So with that, I say to collectors who follow these guys and are listening to, be careful about being misguided, you know, because it's, we're all, it's, a, it's, our, our, it's our opinion, right? So you have to take that with a grain of salt, and if you like something, get it. Get it, right? Because recently... With the Cyclops Astonishing, I know there were a couple of people out there that had big followers that were like, oh, I'm going to return this figure because I don't like it. I don't think it was worth this or that. Well, it may not be worth that to you, but it's worth it to me because I didn't listen to you and I got it and I freaking love it. I freaking love it. So that's what I'm saying to you. And then I listened to some other guy and he loves his too. So that's what I'm saying, guys. You know, take these, this criticism with a grain of salt. If you really like something, you know, it's your collection. It's your collection. Also, too, you know, some of the time these guys, they contradict themselves. They'll say something in one episode. Next thing I know, they're saying it's something different in another episode. I understand we all make mistakes and we have an opinion, right? But my point is, if you really like it, stick to your own guns, right? It's your collection. Do what, you know, grow it as you want. Um, and, and mix it up, mix it up. You don't have to follow anybody in any particular way. You know, now the other thing that I'm like, um, I'm, I try to offer something different is because I know that you have noticed that 
when it comes to hot toys and sideshow, everybody's showing the same thing, right? When I show you one of my hot toys, I am sure that 10 guys before me have already shown you. But I'm hoping that I maybe could show you something different about them. Right? So, so it's something to really, to really think about, you know, and, and you know, and I'm going to take this opportunity to say thank you. That's right. Thank you guys for giving me your time, for hearing me out, um, from following me, from, for subscribing. I, I just wanted to say thank you that I really, really appreciate that. And, um, and like I said, I'm as honest as I get, you know, um, I'm going to keep it real with you. Um, you know, um, I'm a different flavor. I know that. I know that, but that's what makes the world go round, right? So with that said, I want to give a shout out to somebody that does this as well. And I, I listened to him and I know that he was going through some health issues and I, I even heard some bad news and then I finally see him and I was so glad that he's back. So I'm talking about King Zachary. Okay, so of all the guys that are out there, you know, there are a couple of people that I, I, I get a kick out of. And, um, and one of the things is, one of them is King Zachary. And what I really like about this guy is, you know, first of all, he's freaking hilarious. <laughs> the guy is freaking hilarious. Love that about him. And what I love about him more is that he's honest. He's honest. He tells you exactly how he feels. And he'll even give names out there. Freaking love that about the guy. And then what I really like about him too, he gives you a different take on things. You know, like a, like today I saw him doing a tour of some of his of his home, right? And the guy is a really interesting guy. You know, like I I um I like I always tell you I'm an artist and I I see his stuff and I'm like okay yeah this guy has some really good taste, right? I love that about him. He's really really smart. I love smart people. But his collection is all over the place. And what I love about him is that he's not following any trend. He's not like getting the Ikea cabinets and putting everything behind glass. No, he puts it wherever he wants. He got it in his kitchen, in his bathroom, in his entry. Gotta love that. I gotta love that because he's living with his collection. Right? He 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 just he adores his collection and it's obvious and he has an amazing collection. So I got, so, you know, I got to give it to him that he offers something different and that's what I like about him. And the fact that he has some health issues and um, people even said that he, you know, he died. Um, it, it, um, it was great to see him that, that he didn't die and that um, he came back and he came back funnier than, than I've ever seen him. And I think he's a, he's a great guy. So with that, King Zachary, keep it up. Um... And then there's this other guy out there that um, I guess because I also showcase some Barbie, there's some interesting Barbie um, collectors out there that are men. But they're a different man than I am. Right? And um, so with that, a lot of it is not my cup of tea, right? Um, but there's this one guy that when I saw his his one one of his episodes, he's not my cup of tea, but by the end of the episode, he had my respect. Yeah, and this guy is from Barbie Nation. Hilarious, freaking hilarious. First of all. You have no idea how much work it takes to do one of these videos. It takes a lot of work. It, it does, you know, between your editing and the trying to be, you know, um, um, smart about what the, you, you put in it. And, you know, editing is huge when you, you, the more content you have, the more editing. And this guy is, is freaking hilarious. He's campy as hell. He's so Barbie, right? And then so he's very pink. And um, what I love about him is, that he owns it. There's no apology. He owns it. So I got to respect that about him, you know, and I see that the work that he puts into it and I respect it. I, I admire it and I think it's a fantastic thing. 
But the one thing that I got to give him really give him credit for is he styles his Barbies. <laughs> I got to tell you, that is somebody who knows what they're doing and owns it. Because the guy is like, he gets a Barbie and doesn't like the way she looks. The next thing you know, he's got like, like his bedroom. You think that you're going into like a little girl's bedroom because it is so well done. Like so, so immaculate and beautiful. Right. And the fact that it's a guy is, is I, I think that's really something amazing about that because he owns it. But he has like, you know, wardrobes and like, so he'll take a Barbie and he'll, doesn't like her hairstyle. He'll wash her hair. You can see it. He washes it, dries it, and then he restyles it. And freaking amazing what he can do. So I'm a hairdresser. I've always been into fashion. I've always, you know, I, 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 I work with celebrities. I, I know the world. And when I see talent like that, I got to give him credit. I got to give him credit um, because he owns it. He owns it. And like I said, you know, it, it's not my cup of tea, right? But it's that's what makes the world beautiful. Is that 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 difference, you know? And I gotta I give gotta give him credit. And he's got a lot of followers, lots and lots of followers. And I see why. I see why. So the guy to Barber Nation, I know that right now you're suffering from COVID, and you you know hopefully we'll get better. But I would just want to give you a heads up that I admire what you do and I respect it. So yay for you, yay for Mr. King Zachary. So that is that. Yes. Um, so now it's time for mail. It's the mail. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wag It's like almost like my favorite part. I love you, the tune, and you know it's coming. That's right. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. What do I got here? What do I have here? Oh. So a friend of mine, um, yeah, my friend who is taking care of my home in California, she, um, I got a, a, her mail, you I got, got the mail, mail from her, you know, she forwards my mail and I did just, it was a box and I was like, oh, I was like, wow, I got a lot of mail. Well, what made the box a little larger was the fact that A month ago or so, maybe a month ago, I would say, maybe a little longer, I had ordered the Keith Haring Barbie. Um, and for some reason, it went to my other address. And I was like, oh, bomb. So for some reason, she decided that she was going to forward it to me, which I thought was interesting. So I got it. I got it. Right? Yeah. And I got to tell you, I'm so glad that she actually sent it because I have the rest of the artist Barbies at this occasion. So, you know, I, th I think I told you I've got Basquiat, now I've got Andy Warhol, I've got Frida Kahlo, and now I've got my Keith Haring here. And one thing that I didn't know was that, check out the background of that. I mean, that is amazing. Look how beautiful that is, right? And then even her shoe has his artwork on it. So I thought that the box, the design of it, the fact that it's all about Keith Haring is amazing. And there's his bio and there's the guy. I mean, freaking incredible. Freaking incredible. So so I I so love this guy, you know, because at such a young guy, at a young age, he was out there. He was doing graffiti on the streets. He was um, in the club scene. He was getting well-known with some interesting people. You know, he was hanging out with Madonna. He was hanging out with Grace Jones. As a matter of fact, he even painted Grace Jones' naked body. And that in itself was, that's an art piece. I mean, she's an art piece as it is. So I, I love, love, love the fact that he was that guy. When you look at him, he looked like, you know, such a nerd. But he was such a genius and such a cool guy. And um, sadly, you know, we lost him to AIDS when AIDS came out. Um, he was one of the first ones to go and... Um, it was sad, you know, um, because it was my first time really dealing with, with that disease and, and the reality of it. And, um, and it seemed like it was so long ago. Um, but I, I, I have a special place for this guy in my heart. 
Um, so yeah, so Keith Haring, good for you, you know, and Barbie, good for um, honoring him. So I was really cool, um, really pleased with getting that in the mail. And then my friend is like, you know, it's so great when people know you, right? When your friends know you, your family knows you, and they'll see something that reminds them of you, and they'll get it for you. So today, my friend sent me this. And when I got it, it's like, I, I gotta tell you, I was so elated because she knows me. And so I collect vintage print work. Like, uh, I love this type of stuff. This is from Esso, and it's a coloring book. And I don't know what year it is, but look at that. I mean, that's freaking amazing. Yeah, and, and it's like every single one of them is so... There's the product, and then the illustration is with the product, so you color it. I love this. I love this. So, you know, for kids, back then, they would see the colors of this, and when they see the product, they know what colors to use. So I love that point of reference, and I was so touched when I received this, but I thought it was the coolest thing. The Moore story. Yeah. A coloring book for the children. Keep this little playbook around to entertain the children. Yeah. So amazing. So amazing. So thank you. Thank you, my friend. Love that. Um, then I have been dealing with um, this company, this, uh, this um, doll shop. It's called, I believe it's called Susan's Doll Shop. And I believe they're in, oh my God, where? Maryland. I think they're from Maryland. And I had ordered a couple of um, Integrity um, toys from, from, from this woman, Susan, and she didn't get the email that I wanted it to send to this address. And of course, she sent it to the other address. And I then as soon as I found out when I got the, the notice saying that it was being shipped, I immediately contacted her and said, oh, you know, I, I had sent you an email and sure enough, she was able to see, she saw the email, she immediately contacted FedEx and had it reverted here. So it was sent to this address and I finally got it in. I was so thankful that she did that. She paid for the extra shipping. So... You know, I just wanted to give them a shout out saying thank you so much. And I was extremely pleased with the items that I got. So one of them is, I guess, um, Integrity Toys um, had a line called Tula Bell. And they were doing 16-inch um, dolls. And they discontinued those. Then now they only do, I believe, 13-inch. And... When I ordered this one, she, Susan, let me know that this was a 16 inch and not a 13 inch that I was still interested. I was like, yeah, of course. So this one is called Wicked and Divine. And, you know, many times as we know, we see pictures of the figures that we get, whether it's Hot Toys, NECA, whatever it is. And until we, look, we get in our hands, it's when we realize how special it is. And that's exactly what happened with Tula Bell. So I get this and I have to stand up because I have to open the box for you guys, but killer box. Look at that color. I mean, that color is amazing, right? And as an artist, I'm like, oh, I want to use that color. <laughs> so when I open there, first of all, and then, you know, you could tell by the wrapping how well, how, like, how nice something is. Check that out. I mean, this is like a Tiffany thing. I mean, that is I'm beautiful with the ribbon, nice thick paper. Yeah, sweet, right? So I realized that I have not opened, like I haven't pulled out one of my Integrity toys out of the box yet. Mostly because I don't have the cabinets to put them in yet. But it hit me when I, was, I got these, I was like, oh, wow, I still have one of these pulled them out. And some of them I will not because they actually belong in the box. And this one may be one of them. I'm just not sure yet, but I'm going to give you a peek. I'm not even going to do undo the ribbon. I just want to give you a peek 
into the face sculpt of this one in particular. See if I can get it right. When I saw this, I was like, wow. Wow, I mean, it's so, so cool. So yeah, I'm gonna turn this way around so I can show you. Look at that. Do you see that? I mean, and what you can see is like, there are actually some eyelashes going on in there. It's not painted. It's like the real thing. Yeah, I mean, it's like, so beautiful. So, so beautiful. So yeah, so I was like, wow. I'm so glad that I got this. And, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's an incredible thing. So I cannot wait to get my cabinets and undo the ribbon and then see how much I'm going, whether I'm going to put her in a cabinet or keep her in the box. Not really sure yet. But I was so excited when I opened that. I thought it was the greatest thing. So to LaBelle, yay. Right? And then as you see, they come with in the shipper box. You know how we feel about that, right? So it was really, the doll, the, the action figure was really well protected. So yay for that. Then I got, I believe this one is called Beauty. So what I found out interesting about that is that it's a male doll. <laughs> so when he said Beauty, I was like, oh, that's different. Um, so this one is from, the, you know, like I tell you, they had different collections within the Integrity Toys. This one, uh, the new ones that, it came, that it just came out, they're on East 59th Street. That's that's one one collection. Tula Bell is another collection. Then this one here is New Fantasy, and they also have New Face. So New Fantasy, check out the box. I mean, that is smoking. Look at that. Beautiful, right? It's all, it's all metallic. It's such a nice box. And then when I opened it, and I didn't know what to expect, like I tell you, right? And then check it out. So, yeah, look at that. You see that? Look. And there are his shoes. And... Right back behind here, there's a box. And in that box um, is the stand, the base for the stand. There are, he actually has boots. Um, it comes with socks. He's got nice line. I mean, the, the tailoring on these, these outfits are amazing, right? So he's got nice line trench coat. He's got a, a, a pinstripe jacket. Then he's got a shirt and then he's got a tie. And then he's styling with some hair. Yeah, so... So well done. So yeah, so I'm I'm really like really impressed with with, with the line. Um, it, it is really a beautiful thing. It really really is, and I'm so excited that my collection on those is growing nicely. Um, because I'm very picky about those type of things. Um, um, because if if it's you know if I'm gonna get a doll, it's got to be something special about the doll, right? Um, and then. I got this one. So, for the first time in the, I think two years ago, for the first time ever, I wore pink. <laughs> it was, it, I just never gravitated towards pink. I always thought it was a little too feminine. And then I realized that on my, on my Puerto Rican skin, Pink is beautiful. <laughs> so my, it opened up my eyes to it. And then as an artist, hot pink is a freaking fantastic color, like especially like a neon pink. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So Barbie just came out with the pink collection. And I was a little bit like, ooh, I'm not sure about that. But what I've learned that if you don't jump on the wagon when it's fresh, you're gonna lose out because the market is going to go up. So with that, being a member of the of the Barbie club, I was able to find her at a really good price. And when she came in, I didn't know what to expect. And I gotta tell you, this baby right here is heavy. It is a Silkstone Barbie from the pink collection um, the box is like, like shellac. Look at the ribbon. 
there she is, right? The artwork, um, it, this is um, designed by, I guess, one of their top designers right now, who is the same guy that did Star Wars, the Star Wars collection. His name is Robert Best. And this is his work. And this is the Barbie. But you could tell just by the box that she's not just any regular Barbie. I mean, this is like quality right here. And I got to tell you, the weight of this is amazing. And like I said, it's silk stone. So it's kind of like a porcelain type of uh, material. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, and it's one of those that definitely is not coming out of the box. This is definitely staying in the box. And I am so pleased that I got it, even though I'm not into pink. So, um... That is that. So, so yeah, but if you could like feel how much she weighs, it's amazing. Um, and then finally, finally, guess who I got? And I know you guys have seen them before, but I finally got my Darth Vader. Yeah, the, the 40th anniversary edition. And um, one, the first thing I noticed is that it's a tall box. He's got some height to it. I didn't realize he was a tall guy. And um, I was not really sure. Like, you know, I got him because he, you can't have Star Wars without having him as part of your collection. You just can't. Right? But I got to tell you, when I got him and I saw that, like, I put together the base and then I saw him I love him. I think he look, he's amazing. And like, like, like even this, he's not even in here. And this is heavy. <laughs> yeah, like I totally got everything out of here except for the hands. And this is heavy. I mean, I got to tell you. So, you know, I, I, I'm always into the artwork of, of, of these boxes. And um, so these type of boxes with the, with the window, they don't really do it for me. It, 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 I think it's an easier way for it to break. Um, so I'm not really that, that crazy about that, but what I thought that was interesting is that they have photos on the side. They were very informative. So like, you know, there, there he is, right? That's what we expect, but I was not expecting this. Yeah. The fact that his helmet comes off and you can see the scar in the back of his head. Oh, that I love. And as a matter of fact, I think that's how I'm going to display him like this. I think that 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 scar in the back and the fact that you could see his head, that's awesome. That's awesome. So this morning when I got up, I decided, well, you know what? His base has some lights to it. And he actually has quite a bit of lighting himself. So one thing that I wanted to tell you is that I have heard that a lot of times when um, these figures come out with an arm, a separate arm that you put the batteries in for it to light the saber, that it's not that easy to do. And a lot of guys are very frustrated with it. Um, and sometimes they either break the arm or it takes too darn long to get it, to put it on. Um, I, I, I totally get that. So I myself had discovered that the lights that I use are actually spotlights. They, they, they don't have a track on it. They're actually little spotlights. I don't, actually, I don't have one here. But um, these spotlights, I'm able to shine on more cleanly on the figure itself. And with the saber, what happens is that when the light hits it, it lights it up. Yeah, it reflects it to a way that it looks lit. So once I discover that, I have no reason to put the other arm with the batteries in it. First of all, like, like I said, it's a pain in the arse to, to put it on. Two, there's a chance that you may break it. And then three, it's time consuming. And then, the batteries wear out. So when I discovered that and the fact that I could get the effect because you just want to basically light it, right? Well, if you shine a light on it, it lights it up. So that was a great, great discovery. And when I give you, finally, when I do give you my tour, 
you're going to see the, the light effects on the, on how that worked because it's amazing. Um, so I have gotten, so I don't know how many figures and every time that I got to put batteries in them and all this, I, I sometimes don't because it's time consuming, but I have done like, you know, when I got, um, Mark 85, um, I had to put it in the gauntlet hand and I want to see all those stones light up on, you know, with Robert Downey Jr.'s face and love that. So I only put it on that. I didn't put it on his chest or anything to put the batteries on there, but I did it on that and I love that. And then a whiplash, I actually did his chest one because his pack to light it was on the, on like on his belt or something in the back. So that was easy, easy to do. Um, oh, it could have been underneath his arm. I wasn't sure which one. I think Robert Downey Jr. is underneath the arm and then Whiplash is in the back. So those are the only two that I've actually put batteries on and it was easy to click it. So when I got Darth, I was like, you know what? As dark as he is, I want to see the lights on him. So today I went through the chest the he has on his belt he has two compartments and then the base has another compartment and they you know, all the you know comes with the batteries um except for the base that it takes triple a um batteries three of those so keep that in mind but i always have batteries just so when i get something i'm i'm, I'm prepared so sure enough i hooked up the base i freaking love it but what i love about i love about it is that i expected it to be um just the lights are on and that's it but yeah, they actually flash on and off. So I thought that was a pretty cool effect. Like, because it's kind of drama, you know? And then one thing I have to tell you about the figure is that the, I changed the hands, the arm, the hands, with you know, the gloves um, to the one where he's pointing and then the other one where he holds the saber. So one thing I must warn you about that is that, you know, once you have that hand in and it's not that easy to, the, to put in, it doesn't really grab well, whether it's the material inside or you can't see the hole very well. I don't know what, what it is. But once you have it in, kind of leave it alone because they easily fall off. And, you know, as some with some figures, that's that's an issue. And it's a, it's a pain in the butt. So I, um, I hooked them up and I am really, really, really pleased with um, the way he turned out. And actually, I have them right here. I'm not going to pull them out, but I'm going to turn on the, the light. Alexa lights off. Okay. Alexa lights on. Okay. So that you can see and just take take a look at him. But you see how I have him positioned. You see, there's his um, hand, and then there's the saber that I use, and then there are the lights that are flickering. But I think that is smoking. I mean, the whole thing is amazing. And I use the saber that is the one that it looks like it's, um, you know, that is fanned out because when the light reflects on it, it shines more, it brightens up more. So, that that's that's my 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 thing you know and uh so i love that um and also too with the skinny one when you have him pose he kind of loses it when things are around him and stuff it, it gets busy and kind of loses that that slick line where with the fan you definitely see it right so dig that dig 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 that okay so that's what I got as far as males go. I know, right? Pretty good mail. I, I say it's a little bit of everything there. And ending up with Darth, nice bang. But that's not what I'm gonna end up with. I'm gonna talk to you about something else. So I think that I've told you that I'm an artist. And one thing that you may not know is that I do, I have a collection of wearable art. Yeah, you know, like even, even SciShow has some wearable art, right? You, you know, you got like, like the, the, the one, like a t-shirt that has like the, the TV on it, it's like binge watching or something like that, right? Or that now that has the, let's say, hot toys on it and expensive as heck, right? So that's wearable art. So for the last, I think, maybe three to four years now, I've had my, my shop on Shopify 
and I always advertise on Facebook, and um, it's been successful for the last three or four years. I right? I think it's going up, going on my fourth collection, and um, so I wanted to give you, uh, uh, show you a sample of some of my of my wearable art. So here's one. All right. Yeah, so this one is called uh, Mr. Jolly Goodfellow. Okay, and then um, this one here is one that people always think that, you know, I've gone to, I've been in at airports, I've been in museums, and somebody will come up to me and say, hey, is that the Joker? <laughs> it never fails, right? And I'm like, I never saw it that way because that, that's not what I was painting that's not what the, the, the work was but then I could see the reference I could see why they would think so but it's one of my favorites um and both the both of these are because I really like like the, the look of them but here it is right and so you could see right why somebody would think that it's the Joker right so there you have a guy so that's that's so that's what my 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 line is about this type of wearable art fun stuff out of the box, you know. Um, this t-shirt right here is now, I think, like three years old. And as you can see, the color hasn't faded. The material is really cool material. And the artwork hasn't faded. And like even the print on it, where it's, you know, where it has my name, like Peter Zay, um, it, it hasn't faded. It hasn't cracked. I wash it all the time and I'm into quality. So, you know, it's, um, I believe it's, this one is like $30, but if it's going to last you that long and you don't have to worry about it cracking and, you know, it feels good, it's a good investment, guys. It's a really good investment. So with that said, I wanted to let you know that in my new collection, I'm doing superheroes. Yeah. So the first one that I'm introducing is Robin. And Robin 2 was in my head, right? So uh, you can see this is my new one and it's, um, it's called um, um, I Ain't No Boy. <laughs> I know. It's so great. And what I love about that is that girls could wear it too, right? So, you know, it's for, it's for everybody to, to, to enjoy. Um, so with that, I hope you guys like it. If you're interested, Peter Zay t-shirts, you could Google it. You could Google my name. My shop will come up. Or send me a, send me a, a message. Let me know what, what you think. Um, so the Robin t-shirt is in charcoal. Uh, that's the only color that I have now um, for that that design. Um, because I think the contrast of his yellow and green and red against the dark, beautiful. Um, and that one is actually $25. So if you guys are interested, let me know. Hope to see you in the shop. Um, I think it, it, it is a, a really um, great collection that, that I'm working on. Um, the next one that I'm, I think I'm going to be doing is, um, I think it's going to be either Batman or Wonder Woman. Let me know what you guys are interested in. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll hear you out and that's what I'll do. So with that said, keep collecting. Collect what you like. Make sure that you enjoy it, right? So guys, please don't forget to subscribe. That's right, subscribe and um, share me, right? Yeah, talk to you guys later. See ya.